Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over the ifs function in Excel. Okay, so the ifs function, it's a little unusual, it's a little unusual to say at least. Uh, basically, you would use the ifs function, that's IFS, in situations where you would do a nested if function. So nested if functions are not necessarily complicated, but they can be a bit tedious to write out. The ifs function is a lot easier. So here's a situation I've got. So I've got a, a group of students and they've got numeric grades, and I wanna apply a letter grade based on the number grade. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off. In fact, let me zoom in a little bit more on this. I'm gonna go ahead and start off an ifs function. Now with an ifs function, you're, you know, well, with a normal if function, you would do if it's true, and then if it's false. The logical test, what happens if it's true, what happens if it's false. With the ifs function, we're focused on the logical test, and if it's true, and then the next logical test. So it's a little easier to write. My first logical test is gonna be the student's grade greater than or equal to, if I can get that, 90. And then I do a comma, and if it is greater than 90, then I'm gonna enter in a letter A, comma. And I just move on to logical test two, and I can just keep on moving is the student's grade greater than or equal to 80, comma. If it is, they get a B. And I'm just going to keep on going down the line. And when I get to the end, I'm going to do if the student's grade is greater than or equal to, well, let's type that out, greater than or equal to 0, and that would be enough. So that's going to be my complete ifs function. Once I have that for one student, I can just autofill it down to the others. And everything is looking pretty accurate. In fact, if I took a student's grade and I changed it to below 60, we get the F, and a grade at 90 is still an A, but a grade at 89 is a B. All right, so that's pretty accurate. Um, but let me go through a couple scenarios and the way you need to write this ifs function, because it is pretty critical. So I'm going to do a slightly simpler version over here to the right. This time I have various quantities, and I want to give a discount based on the number of quantities of a product on hand. So I'm going to start out the same with my ifs function, and I'm going to type, is the quantity greater than, yeah, I'll just do greater than, greater than 30, and the discount will be 0.15 or 15%. Notice for a numeric value, I'm not putting that in quotes. And then I'll also check and see if the quantity is greater than, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually write this wrong here, so I'm gonna go greater than 50, and I want that discount to be 0.25. So I'm doing this a little bit backwards, and let's see what kind of result we get. Now, I didn't account for zeros or things less than 30, but you'll notice that in theory, if the quantity is greater than 50, there should be a discount of 25, yet this product is 72 and it's only 15%. So basically what we can learn from this is that the ifs function is gonna stop at its first true statement. So since my statement here, greater than 30 was true, it ignored all the remaining uh, logical tests. So you do need to be a little bit cautious about the sequence in which you write your logical tests. In theory, I should have done greater than 50 is going to be the 25%, and greater than 30 is going to be the 15%. And that's going to give me much more accurate results. And of course, I can finish this up with is the quantity greater than or equal to 0, and maybe the discount is 0. So that's the ifs function. And with my letter grade scenario, everything was in order. And I started from, from large to small because that made sense for this particular situation. Um, if a student had a grade higher than, let's say, 80, then I had no need to check the other logical tests. 
Similar for my discount now. If the quantity is greater than 50, they get the, big, the biggest discount, which means I don't need to run any of the other tests. However, if the first test is false, then it's going to move on down to the next test. If that test is false, it's going to move on down to the next test. And it's good to always end with a logical test that seems to catch everything that did not get caught in the prior tests. So that's the ifs function.